Well, hello, everybody. J7409, Jewel Chesson here with the J7409 Weather Channel, along with my dear friend, Ann Dale, which you may hear me just call her Dale, because I kind of do that a lot, from <laughs> Homestead at the Colony. How you doing, Ann? I'm doing great, Jewel. Thank you so much for having me on here. I'm Ann. It's Homestead in the Colony, and uh, we're going to have a good time today. Yes, we are. And, and hopefully we can enlighten some people on some things that may help them if they happen to run into an emergency situation because of natural disasters or just regular natural problems that pop up from day to day that we aren't expecting. We've got a lot of little things to talk about. But first off, I want to tell all of my viewers, as well as your viewers, that Anne is a really dear friend of mine. Anne has same, been same. Anne sticks by me through thick and thin. She came to see me and she didn't, she had a good ways to travel when I was in the hospital, when I got hit head on. And I don't know what I would have done without her. As a matter of fact, she's the first one that ever took me for a ride in a wheelchair that really wasn't a wheelchair. It was a bed on wheels. <laughs> and she, and Anne's not a big person, folks. It took every bit of energy she had, but she rolled me all over that place. And now she's still not really close to me, but whenever I have really bad spells, she always comes and checks on me. So I yeah. think the world of her, her husband Worth, and her children, Wes and Sarah and their families, they mean very, very much to me. And well, I just you know, we love you. Know. We love you, Jewel. We certainly do. Well, I just wanted to get that out there. And before we get going with anything else, this is a collaboration video we are making. So all of my viewers, if you are watching right now, and I hope you are, please click a link to Andale Homestead at the Colony. I'll put one under this video. Go over, subscribe, tell her I sent you, check her out. I'd appreciate that a lot. And I'm sure Dale, as I call her, wants our subscribers to do the same for me. I do the weather, folks. That's what Absolutely. I do. Okay, yes, Dale. I would like to introduce to our followers on Homestead in the Colony that this is my dear friend from way back when, long before marriage, before children, that she and I used to work at a radio station together. And we uh -oh. had the best time. Oh my gosh, we got in some trouble. But we did have a really good time together. So Jewel and I have been dear, close friends for decades, which is um, a, a really special occasion. But I was talking with Jewel about uh, all this severe weather that's supposed to happen this year. And when we were talking about the hurricane season, and you were expressing that they may be moving the date even up, like up into May. Well, and what that's all about is that they're moving it up to May 15th. Hurricane season won't actually start May 15th. It will still start June 1st. But on May 15th, they are going to start putting up advisories on these okay. systems that may form and could develop into tropical storms or hurricanes early. Okay. Okay. Well, that helps. See, I depend on you for all of that information. Like I said, I don't know all those fronts and all those highs and El Nino, Cusi, whatever, <laughs> but you do. And so um, I like to uh, be prepared. But I had a friend, I have a friend that when this big freeze went through in Texas, then she's a savvy girl. But she got caught short. And the only thing they had in their house without electricity was a couple of candles. And they kept thinking the current was coming back on, coming back on. And it got to the point where it was so cold in her home that she could see her breath. And they were afraid to go to sleep. There were no hotel rooms. There was no way to get anywhere. And she had nothing. And so with you and I talking and chatting, and, um, you know, there's, a, there's some times where we don't have all these expensive things, the, the big generators or the solar generators or any of those things, but there's some stuff that we have around the house that pretty much everybody's going to have. So I thought maybe you and I, we had talked about sharing some of that. Is that okay? 
That's great. That's wonderful. You know, if you've got severe, just say if you've got severe weather approaching you, the pressure, the barometric pressure is going to go down. Now, I'm going to talk about barometers in a moment. Everybody doesn't have one. Everybody needs one. But if you don't have a barometer and you have some really severe weather coming your way, you know how you can check and see if that's really happening? I don't. All you have to do is look in your commode. The water in your commode will go down. Next time a hurricane is around us, uh -huh. do it. You'll see it happen. I've the never pressure, checked that. The barometric pressure will be so pressing down on us as it falls, it will squeeze the water slowly but surely out of your commode. I didn't know that. Well, see, learn something new every day. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Dale, I've been through so many, I've seen it many times. So I'm just telling people, watch the water level in your commode. And that is a sure sign. If it starts to go down slowly but surely, the more it goes down, the closer the storm system's getting to you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put that in my memory bank. Okay. I'm going to make sure I learned that. Well, one thing I was thinking is, you know, if the electricity goes out or something happens, you have some severe weather that comes your way and it's dark, what's your first thought? Well, after you're trying to get to your safe room, but we all need light. I mean, you got, I personally want to see what's going on around me. And if the <laughs> roof is falling in or there's a tree in my house or something crazy like that. And uh, so I began to gather some lights and you had spoken just last night about carrying flashlights in your pocket yes now these flashlights came from roses it was two in a pack for two dollars there are led lights too aren't they they are and they of course i don't want to you know they're screw, bright screw yeah anybody, but they're very bright and they have uh an alarm you know an alarming light so people can find you if you're hollering, you might be able to find you, but they have the little hooks that can hook on your pocketbook or your um, strap or anything, you know, your, um, your belt. belt loop, yeah, right, your belt, belt loop. loops, any of that stuff. And of course, but, living in hurricane area, we all have, we do, not everybody, but you and I have some battery operated flashlights, things like that. But sometimes if it comes out of nowhere, you might get hung up without batteries. I have been there. I was gonna go get them tomorrow and uh, tomorrow just didn't come. And so I saw, I saw, which I'm sure a whole bunch of people know already, but maybe they don't. We have, there's Crisco it, or any kind of shortening any kind of just a can of shortening that you can get. And I've been saving my little jars. There were um, garlic in here, but pimento jars or anything like that. And you just fill it up with Crisco or shortening and put a birthday candle in the middle. If you have any kind of little birthday candles or anything, that can be the wick for it. These things will last for seven days. That's, That's a long time. And That's then you right. have light. That's and right. And you potentially have some cooking oil, you know, that you might be able to fry an egg with or something like that. Now, That's as far amazing. as... That's amazing they last that long, too. This and lasts 72 days for the big thing. And um, what I have done, I wanted to show everybody, this is a trick. I just went to Walmart bought the cheapest can of shortening that they had it's not like it goes bad you know and you could just got some wicks in there you can use it for your cooking stuff but you have to have cotton cotton strings i put one in there already because i was trying it out before we got on here and i wanted to show you a trick so you got i had purchased a bunch of candle wicks 
uh, from Amazon, it was like $3 for a whole bag of candle wicks. And what I saw people do was melting all that shortening and all that stuff. Well, that was too much of a mess. So I didn't do that. Um, but let's do it the Andale way. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a drinking straw. This is just a plain drinking straw. Find your string, put it through the drinking straw. Here's a little, well, this came off a little soda can top and we tie it on the end of it. And then I got one of the spears that we had around the house that we cook with. And you can shove this thing down in this with that spear all the way down, shove it all the way down. And then you just pull your straw out, hopefully not the string at the same time. Yep, it stayed in there. And then you trim off the wick. That is that great, Dale. That's a wonderful idea. And that's easy for anybody to do. And it's not expensive at all. Well, anybody can do that, which is so outstanding. And then if you happen to have some candle wicks, because, you know, we try to plan ahead. I put the candle wick in a straw and just shove that down. So I've got something that will last, this will last, the, the records on it are like 72 days, which doesn't make any sense to me. And who's gonna burn a candle for 72 days anyway? But I mean, it'll last a long time. Hopefully you can, till you can get somewhere or something to be able to get and some plus it'll give off a little heat. It does give off a ton of heat. It absolutely does. It gives off a ton of heat. So that was one thing for light. I've got, now I'm all tangled up here. And, um, and then I have the little battery things, but I was interested in the stuff that you have. When I okay. visited you well, last- If you want to talk about lights, I don't have the little LED pocket lights like you do. I have one that looks like this. I have another one I keep out on, my table in the living room, if has, something occurs and I need to get going. One thing I want to stress though, we're showing everybody the stuff, but you guys, when you get this stuff or if you already have this stuff, make sure you already have it close by and in a bag or an area, not the candles, but your flashlights, a bottle right. of water, your, your lights, your phone, and I can't stress enough, pocketbooks and wallets that have like your social security card, I'm getting right. old, like your Medicare card, things that you just don't want to have to get over that are very important. Make sure you have them on your person. And when it comes to all the other things, make sure you have everything in a bag. Get your, right. and, and have this ready if you have a watch, not a warning. That's the difference. If you right. have a watch, not a warning, because if you have a warning, that's time to grab it and get to your safe place. What we have is like a tote. It's like a plastic, you know, like a plastic tote that is too heavy to pick up for you. It would be too heavy to pick up and carry, but you could put it in a spot that would be convenient for you. Um, I have worth here, thank goodness, but I could drag the thing if I needed to drag it somewhere. And you could drag it if you needed to drag it. You could, you could do. We do amazing things. things if we have to, don't we? Well, That's light. Right. You were at my house the other day, and I have this. Yeah. It looks like a light switch. I don't know how well everybody can see it. There's probably a glare on it. Let yeah. Me just light out right quick and see if that helps. Okay, on. that help. Pull it back a little. Yep, right there. Okay, now. This looks like a light switch. You can hang it on the wall. Just put a little tack or something. It doesn't matter. I have them in my living room and in my kitchen. Now, these run off of LED lights also. Yeah, that thing is bright. It lights up the whole living room. Now, grant you, I have a more smaller living room than most people do, but it lights up a large portion of my kitchen. It runs off of batteries. They're very hard to find, but I have found some. If people would like to look them up, 
They're not that expensive and you can get them. I found Walmart says they sell them, but as you and I know, when you go to Walmart looking for a specific thing, it's hid somewhere and you can't find it. Yeah, I couldn't find them. I went specifically after I left your house, I went to go find some just like yours and well, I couldn't find them. The best place to get them is Amazon. Okay. Now, Amazon has these exact same ones that look just like a light switch, okay? Just like these. You can get, get them like two in a pack, four in a pack, six in a pack. Okay. I, think, I think if you get six, they run you around 18 bucks. Okay, that's not bad. Okay. And, less than 20, and that, I can do less than $20. Yes, and they run off of double A batteries. And folks, I'm just telling you, they work wonderful. The batteries, these are LED lights. The batteries last a long time. Batteries is something, I, while I'm talking about this, though, before I forget, everybody right now, this doesn't cost a lot of money. You don't have to do it every month, but every other month, you need to pick you up a pack of AAA and double A batteries. And you need, I agree. you need to make sure that you have enough A batteries for a bigger flashlight. If you need it, like I don't have a generator. You guys do. Yeah. Worth would need a good flashlight if he had to go out and fill it up. You yes. need to make sure you got all this stuff. So don't wait until we have a tropical storm or a hurricane that's going to hit us. And even with these tornadoes going on now, and even back when we had the ice and the snowstorms, do this, put yourself in this position that just when you go to the store, maybe every other month, pick up a pack of double A batteries, triple A batteries, right. whatever. Then that way you won't have to worry. They'll, you won't have to rush to the store to get them. Because more than likely yep. there won't be any there. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. right. As soon as you tell me that, Dale, there's a hurricane out there, I start getting on Amazon. I order batteries. I order this. I order that. I mean, you're my little warning system. Dale. I'll, ne I'll never forget one day you says, well, Dale said, well, Jewel, do you think we need a generator? I said, yeah. And what happened? We went and bought a generator. <laughs> And there was a storm, a bad storm. There was, uh, I'm glad, what was I'm glad. Which, which storm was that? Uh, it was the flood that, that, Florence. that flooded. Was it Florence? Yeah, that flooded Sneed Ferry and Jacksonville and New Bern and Little Washington and all it's flooded real bad. It's the one that about washed me away. Right, right. But anyway, yeah. I'm trying to think. It was one that started with an eye, got you real bad at one point and it was Isabel. Isabel. And ever since Isabel, man, my eyes have been opened. I can tell you that. Well, you've that was done, crazy stuff. You've done great, Dale, on all your stuff here. What do you want to talk about next? And I'll get something I want to talk about, too. Okay. Well, you know, first thing you want to do is be able to see. Next thing, in order to be able to sustain life, we have to have water. You have to have water. And um, sometimes if you get cut short, like that, like our friends in Texas, they didn't have water for weeks. They had to boil everything. Sometimes we get boil your water alerts, things like that. So I thought I was fancy, okay? Because I was being prepared. And I ordered myself some of these little tablets come in these little bottles, which I thought it was double the amount. No, it's a two-step process. Little did I know before today. And, um, but you're supposed to be able to, I pulled out two jars. This quart size is what you're supposed to be able to do to sanitize. And these things weren't cheap, but they're not horribly expensive. And uh, they're called Portable Aqua was the package. It's a good thing that I, I had to read the instructions today because I'd have been in a mess if I didn't already know. I'm not sure this is going to work all that good. You get one tablet out, two tablets of the first jar. And when I read the instructions, it said, make sure you don't get in any of the contents inside wet. 
And I said, well, of course you wouldn't get it wet. How would you get it wet? And then I picked up the jar of water and got my hands wet. <laughs> I said, well, that's how you go get it wet. You've got to make sure you have a drying towel around. Anyway, you put two in there. You leave the cap loosened a little bit for five minutes. Then you tighten it up and you shake it up and you have to wait 30 minutes. And then you add the second two tablets. And this is, uh, it's for at least 30 minutes and you're supposed to shake it up. Now, I don't want to drink this. Looks a little muddy, don't it, Dale? It's rainwater and it's <laughs> gross. Look, this is a jar of the same kind of water and this looks worse than this does. This is not clean. This is supposedly clean. Hey, Dale, shake that muddy up. Looks like you got a little tadpole floating around in it. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It's a leaf. There's a leaf in them. But, so we know that that, I mean, it might help a little bit in a real jam, but I'm not going to depend on that. I thought I was secure. But you have a water filter at your house. Yes, uh, I have a, well, what I have is one of these everyday uses because my water got messed up and it really wasn't ever right since. As a matter of fact, not the last water bill, but the one before that, they said, here's some test strips. <laughs> they sent them. <laughs> I'm serious. Here's some test strips, test your water. So I said, you know, forget it. And I know whenever you come to my house, you probably walk in my kitchen and go, why do you have all those jugs of water? I know why you have them. Well, now you know, I keep them there. Right. And I rotate them around. But I like the fact that you have, I mean, like I have, fourth and I have these big jugs. Now, for you, you have like uh, quart jugs, which is easier to consume. And half, half a gallon jugs. I have half a gallon jugs and quart size, right. Right. And that way it doesn't get like stale-ish kind of. Right. You know, because you can rotate it around and you can carry it better. Carry it. Oh, easier. yeah. And, and it's like, I do have a water filter that my friend Linda sent me for Christmas, which I appreciate a lot, that I can just pour my water in. It filters it great. You had some. It tasted fine, didn't it? It's delicious. But it tastes very good. On the other hand, if you are somewhere and you do not have good water, like Anne had some rainwater there, I've got a thing right here. It's a, a water straw. Okay. Oh, it's a water bottle with a water, yes, with it's one a of those water, filtered it's straws. Water, it's a water bottle, but it's a water filtration system. Let me show you about it. Now, my friend Karen sent me this. She's a subscriber. I'm not going to tell anybody's name. I'm going to say their real name. Then I, everybody won't know who they are but them. I like to keep people safe, you know? Yeah. Okay, now this is what it looks like. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them in a lot of different places. I think they cost maybe 15, 20 bucks. Everything is a, a really good price. But what you do is, just like my big water container that filters my drinking water you saw, this yeah. has a filter in it also. Okay. Okay, what you do is you fill this up with rainwater or whatever kind of water you can get. Yeah. Put this back inside of it. Then you pull this back and you see a little straw come out here. You mm. mash it and you let the water go into a glass or a container and it runs through and it filters what's in here. Then you take whatever came out that you pumped out and it's not, look, I can do it and you know my hands aren't anything. Right. You take what comes out of it the first time, do it a second time, and you can drink it. And this thing is like 99% of cleaning up everything. That's awesome. It cleans up all of this stuff. I mean, everything you ever heard of. Okay, cool. So I, I, would, I would suggest people get one of these. Yeah. Just like what happened out in Texas. Right. 
If they could have found any kind of water, they could have made drinking water. Right. Right. And they wouldn't have had to they wouldn't have had to boil it. A lot right. of people use these things when they're camping and just get water running out of a spring or like in a mud hole, like I said, whatever. Right. It's like you do what you have to in an emergency. Well, that's what that's this is kind of a mini version of what you have. They're called outdoor survival straws. Uh huh. See if I can put it right the right way. Outdoor survival straws. Now they're not cheap. It was like twelve dollars for two or something off of Amazon. But this has a filter in it. Also, it's supposed to filter like five thousand drinks, and it's got a straw on it. But you can put this like right down in the water to drink and or you've got a straw here that you could fill up a cup if you needed to fill up a cup with the same kind of water that you're talking about and you attach the straw if i can get the straw in there you attach the straw to the bottom of it and then it goes all through here but there's a collapsible bag and in, inside and it has its own filter system and it's really light. You can carry it around your neck. If you have to go somewhere, you know, you can carry it around your neck. So that um, was very helpful. And um, I, I guess I could probably drink that rainwater, but I'm not going to. I, that stuff, you I, that don't look right, Dale. All right. On mine, it kills 99.9% .9 of all the microorganisms. It kills 97% of all the viruses. You can take it everywhere. I saw somewhere on here. This is what I was looking for. If you've got untreated water, like outdoor water, rain water, you're out camping, spring water, whatever, even mud hole water, you can use this 160 times. Okay. This says it fil filters up to 4,000 liters or... 1056 gallons and has a shelf life of five years and it says 99.9 percent .9 of getting all of the bacteria out but you know it doesn't say what bacteria or at well, least i didn't mine, oh, mine, ca mine came with it yeah we got papers dale i ain't gonna read it but it gets everything okay and plus mine gets viruses and crap out awesome well, I want what you have. That's how that but at the same speaking, time, speaking these are of, pretty cool. Yeah. Speaking of water, everybody I know that is above the age of 18 needs a cup of coffee in the morning. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and some that are not above the age of 18. <laughs> but <laughs> this is a French press. Okay. I need one of those. Now, my friend Karen sent this to me. Okay. Now, I can't drink regular coffee because of my health. I have to drink decaffeinated coffee. So I'm just used to filling up my cup and throwing it in the microwave, putting some instant decaf in, and away it goes, right? Right. Well, you can make real coffee with a French press. That's what they're known for. Or you can... This is this this will keep it hot. This is getting to my main point. Just fill the sucker up with some water that you've heated, and we're going to get to fire in a moment, folks. But fill this up with water that you have heated. If you got instant coffee or not, you can make a pot full of coffee, and it will stay warmer ten times longer than any other thing you've got to put it in. Okay. So get you one of these. And if you don't get one of these, go ahead and get you just, if it's nothing but a camping coffee pot or just right. like, like you just sat down, just some kind of container that right. you can put warm water in. But I've got that now and I can have coffee for a while instead of making it one cup at a time because that uses more fire and more energy that we have to produce if we don't have what we're used to having in modern day electronic world. You know what I'm right. saying? We don't have our right. stoves. We don't have That's this. Right. We don't have that. 
Well, I, I also have another thing that I thought was the cat's meow. I thought it was the bee's knees. <laughs> it's a solar power pack. And it has, has a compass on the back in case you need a compass. But um, it has a thing that you can plug in your phones. And you can also charge this in the wall. You can charge it in the wall. Or you can use it for solar charging. Do you have your solar charger? Uh, continue talking, Dale. That's okay. what I'm looking for. Anyway, I've got this. I tried it out for one of the first times last night because, uh, you know, Jewel had all those bad, you had all those bad storms around you and uh, your nephew had all those bad storms around him. And I thought, you know what? I haven't taken that thing. I took, I opened the box and I put it underneath a lamp to try to get it charged up. Well, that don't last. Well, the lamp out. ain't the sun, honey. No, it's not. <laughs> Number one, Dale, if it's solar, you need the sun. The sun. <laughs> well, it's been sitting outside all day on the hood of the car now, so it should be good. But um, it's, I mean, it's a good one. It does have a flashlight on the end of it. If I can figure out how to turn the doggone thing on again. Um, it's a, a, a good flashlight and it's got that alarming flashlight thing. But uh, I don't know if it was because I didn't have it charged up properly or what, but it kept turning itself off last night. One thing about chargers, whether they're solar or whether they're like mine, I have one that I charge with electricity, but I have a very good one. And you can get these at your local cell phone place where you have your cell phone service or i have found not me but my nephew brad has one came from a dollar store he yeah, didn't they've he got did. them there but they don't last very long but, but you know what though during florence it worked awesome what what it is is those little teeny ones they work but you only get one charge out of them okay I get 36 out of this one. Right, right. And well, I mean, they've got how many do you get off of your, so how much do you get out of your solar one there? Well, I don't know. It would be in the instructions that <laughs> I haven't read very well. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Put you on spot about your solar no, charge. No, no, no. It's perfectly fine. Uh, that's what I'm saying. All this dry run is so <laughs> good for us to be able to know I mean, I really thought I was in high cotton with all my stuff and all my supplies. And then I realized, wait a minute, you, you're not all that great, girl. You gotta if, it's you great. Work. You got it. If you don't know how to use it, it's not going to do you any good. And not a bit of good. Not <laughs> a bit of good. So, uh, but I, I'm glad. I'm glad to know that I don't have to figure all this out in a tough situation. It, it kept is it's a calm situation. It kept flashing on and off because it was probably fully charged. No, I mean, it stopped charging my phone. I had my phone plugged up to it and it would just cut itself off. Well, that's, few well, hours. well, that's probably because it wasn't fully charged. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. So it's been charged. It's been charging, but um, that's something that, you know, you got to plan ahead for <laughs> this charger that I have will charge large iPads and small iPads as well as your phone. So it's a really good little thing. If you don't want one like this, now this one did cost, I think, $40, $45, but it was worth it to me where I live. Right. Things that I go through. You have to think about that. That's the most money that I spent on anything like that because I, mm -hmm. I don't have it. And right. I don't know too many people that do, but it's worth it. You can get them much cheaper. You can still get some that will charge 10 times, 20 times at your cell phone offices. And you don't have to pay that for them. They're much cheaper. You can get them for 20, 25 bucks. It's very worthwhile to get one. Okay. Well, I'll have to check into that because I've got a couple of the little um, $3 and $5 ones. Well, you've got and, your and solar last, one there. 
Yeah. Got, and now, now that you, I've got it charged in the sun. <laughs> you, ha you have your solar one. The only yeah. problem is when it dies, if it's still stormy, you ain't going to charge it back up. So, yeah. But I mean, luckily, if the bat, you know, if the batteries, if I don't have any batteries, I'll be able to do something eventually. So that's a good thing. But um, I also, I have, I wanted to show you, I found this really cool. You've got the coolest little cook stove, but <laughs> I found, um, I was thinking in my house, if I don't have any of these supplies, what do I have in the cabinet that I can get out and make a stove? And I have, this is something that I have, I can, a bigger can and then one of those little like tomato paste cans but you have to fill the edge underneath the bottom with dirt and around the side because if you don't this can's going to get too hot and you can catch your house on fire you can catch your cabinet on fire and all of those things and you can but burn only, yourself you can burn yourself but the only thing i thought we'd do this together only thing you need are cotton balls, which most people have some cotton balls in their house somewhere or some type of cotton. Toilet paper would work. The toilet paper would work too. So I'm going to stuff some cotton balls in here. And then, um, where's my alcohol? The guy that I was watching had two different kinds of alcohol. This is 70%. And he had a 50% and a 70%, and the 50% was nothing compared to the 70%. You can't hardly find 90% alcohol out there anymore because and everybody's You can't hardly up. find alcohol, period, right now. It, yeah, it's better <laughs> right this second with alcohol, but it's more expensive. Anyway, you just pour the alcohol right in there on top of those cotton balls. Try not to, like, you know, kill yourself or anything. And... Then what I did, I just got two bigger cans to go on either side of it. Let's see if you can see that. Go on either side of it. You light it. This is another reason why I'm glad we did this today. I had all these kitchen matches that I thought, well, I'm in, I'm, I'm in good shape. These are good. But these were probably Worth's mother's. <laughs> he's 65 they've probably been around longer than that and so the side of the box it don't work no more but uh, that was good to know too that I didn't count on that so the breeze is blowing I hope I can light it and I don't know that anybody's gonna be able to see the fire anyway but this burns you probably can't see it yeah we can see it I can see There's, it there's it's a good flame good. there. Yeah, there's a good flame and it burns for a while. And then you just put, I have a cast iron pan, a little cast iron pan, any kind of frying pan that go right over it. Or your little camping pan, like you were talking about, boil water, make ourselves some instant coffee so we don't kill everybody in our <laughs> neighborhood not having coffee. <laughs> what you have just made is homemade sterno. Yes. And what I do is I have cans of Sterno also. You're a little more neater than I am. I have two bricks that I lay on my cabinet, put my can of Sterno in the middle, and then put my pan on top of the bricks. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. It all works the same way, but that's, that's great. You made homemade Sterno, Dale. But that's something that everybody might have in their house, you know? You might not have a can of Sterno. We do, you and I do, but somebody, my friend in Texas did not. She didn't have Sterno cans. What we need to stress to people though is you can make this stuff, but you need to make it before you use it, have to use it. Don't well, wait. You need to practice. Yeah, you need to like get your cans, watch this video again, Dale tells you, you get one can, one size, a smaller can, you put your dirt in it, then your cotton balls, you have to do all of that. Make sure that's all done before you actually have to use it. Right, right. Before you have to use it, because I learned a lot this morning. And uh, oh, don't blow it like that, because dirt gets all over your face. 
but that was as hard as it was. I mean, it's not hard to, to blow it out. Also, um, this is something Worth found. He went to go get some charcoal lighter fluid and they didn't have any of the Food Line brand. And all they had was this really high dollar expensive stuff. But this is a new charcoal lighter gel, but it's made by Sterno. Mm -hmm. And it's like green, it's Sterno squeeze out. It's that Sterno gel stuff that you could just squeeze in your cans. And it does the same thing. Does the same thing. That's pretty cool. I That's that pretty cool. Else. That's pretty cool. I'm going to show everybody my little stove. Yes, please. Or I'm going to attempt to. It's a really cool little stove. Uh, she was showing me that the other day, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I need to get one of those. <laughs> it's funny how we want everything our friends have, isn't it? But. When I saw these cans and I, I figured, you know, everybody's okay. got some cans. I don't know how many of you guys can see this. I know a I lot of people it. know what this is and a lot of people may have one. This was also a present from Karen. Karen sent me everything to keep me alive during a hurricane. Bless her heart. Karen and loves also, you. We love Karen for loving you. Well, I also love Connie. Connie sent me something brand new this year when it was so cold. They've come out with electric blankets that you can ball up and put all around you. You can even put them in the washing machine. It doesn't hurt them. Well, do you have to plug it up? I mean, is it battery operated? No, it, no, no. You have to put it in the, you have to plug it in the wall. Yes, but, but it's still, that's whole, awesome. Yes, technology has changed so much. So thank you, Connie, for that. But now what you do with this, you see, this looks like a regular, I don't know if you can see it, a regular graded gas stove. And yeah, I can see if it. you look at the front of it here, you have your knobs. You control it just like it's a cook stove. But the mm -hmm. very neat thing about this is, and I don't have a can of it in here with me, but it runs off of a can of butane gas. That's awesome. This gas is very inexpensive. This stove is very affordable. You can pick one up for 20 or 25 bucks. Yeah, see, those are my kind of prices. Because <laughs> just about everything we have here today, you can get for less than $100. Or you may already have it in your home. Well, you can pick these stoves up for about 20, 25 bucks. Look on Amazon, look in a whole lot of places, you'll find them. And the cans of butane gas will last a long time. Okay. And you can buy a supply of four cans in just a box, probably for 18 bucks. And okay. that will go through a lot of natural disasters. Right. right. It, it's well worth it. And I just... I thank all my subscribers for everything they do for me, and whether it's a donation, sending me things through the mail, and just yeah. watching my videos. Isn't that I, awesome? I appreciate it, and I do love them with all my heart so much. And don't you dare think, you know, like I call you, mm -hmm. I call my subscribers the one I have phone numbers to, and I check on them too. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, I know you and do. Also, I, I do. want to mention Jersey Dolphins right quick. I've got something else to talk about, but he's a dear friend too, and I love him to death. And when Florence did happen, I did not have an iPhone. Yeah. He sent me his old iPhone. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he's so cool. He, ch he chats with me on my channel, and I'm just crazy about him. He's, I mean, I have some very good subscribers and I love all yes, of my do. people and I have a good group of people and all of my people believe in Jesus. Oh, that's so wonderful. And the ones that don't are coming around <laughs> and, and it's like, you know, God bless them all. And I do that's thank right. them. I wanted to put this in here. I do thank you guys for everything you do for me. And one yes. day I want Dale's subscriber count up there. So she gets surprises in the mailbox. 
that would be fun. I'm just a little baby channel right now, but I've really, um, I never understood when I was watching YouTube creators of how they would say, I love you so much. Thank you so much. I get it now because you appreciate people coming and watching your videos so much that they would take the time to be able to do that. It's just, it's amazing to me. I love it. And you know what, Bill, the one thing that we all need to do is love each other and let each other, there's no big deal in telling somebody you love them. If you mean it, it's like, it makes their day, makes them feel, makes them feel like they are somebody. I mean, when you say that you love them and mean it, yes. that's the big deal. Yes. And I know when you say that, you mean it when you're talking about your <laughs> subscribers. Um, I do the same. I feel the same way. Okay, I have one more thing that I wanted to kind of share a little bit. I was trained in, well, I've got my garden sprouts here on the table because I was trained. Um, John Dale was a mentor of mine in real estate. And he taught me to think like a farmer and work like a hunter, meaning you're planning for the future, but you're working like a hunter right now to be able to do things. So the things that we did today are what you can do right now. That's the hunting. The farming is being prepared for in the distance and growing a garden um having your little lights that you have all in strategic places around your home making sure that you have water filters in place that i know now after trying to get those little tablets to work that i am slack in that that is a hole in my prep that i need to fill and so Dale, I'm can i interject one that. thing hon yes we need food and we need water, but we need water more than we need food. Right. We have yes. to have them both. Don't get me wrong, but people should really try to make sure they've got some kind of way they can contain some rainwater and try yes. to keep it as clean as possible and get a filter so they can filter it in case they do not have resources like they're used to. That's right. That's exactly right. So in, in my mind, in my own opinion um to be able to have light to get around so i don't break my neck when i'm trying to get around through the house and to be able to have water those are the first two two priorities in this time of year we you and i don't worry about heat as much but with all these little candles the little crisco candles that puts off a lot of heat you put it underneath the um clay flower pot but that's not going to heat up. It will. It'll heat up. But you put a coin on top of the hole, and that gives it some ventilation. But at the same time, it heats up. I mean, this morning, this pot had a flower in it. And I dumped out the stuff. If, if you do what you got to do when you need, if you're cold, you can, you can, that flower can wait. <laughs> you can warm yourself <laughs> up and get that pot going um and so that was something that was really interesting to me but thinking like a farmer um i've done a video before which was a hoot because i messed it up entirely the first time i tried to um vacuum seal my beans i i messed up the bag but that just shows that if you mess it up the first time you try try again this is vacuuming this will keep for years Although I don't want to keep it for years, what I will do is rotate. Uh, as I run out of the ones that I have right now that are fresh, then I will use these and refill, you know, make another kind of thing so that it doesn't stay forever. But I've learned how to can, which is really cool. I'll have to share some things with you of my canning. I have some applesauce. I have some, this is ham and bean uh, soup that we canned up. Um, so underneath Worth's bed, <laughs> underneath our bed has quite a bit of canned goods in it. That's about the only place I could find that was gonna be dark and cool. Um, we try to keep some little, although these are horrible for you, but we try to keep some little mac and cheese things. You heat up your water on your little 
double can thing. Just add water to that. Or I've seen you in your home. You have nabs and you have applesauce. These little containers of applesauce. And something else too that I've discovered that is a real treat. And it's not exactly healthy for you, but I choose to think that the peanuts are making up for the M&Ms. <laughs> I've got M&Ms and peanuts and raisins are all in like a trail mix. And that's something that's mobile too, if you have to leave your house. So, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, that's a good thing. All of this stuff's been good. It's been very interesting. You know, hey, Ann, if you were out and a storm came up and it started hailing and you were driving down the road, what would you do? Well, you know, I always thought I'd go and get in a ditch. But I don't know for sure. Why would you get in a ditch? To try to get out of, I mean, a hail is like sometimes most of the time there's a tornado around it right sometimes not all the time sometimes it's in severe thunderstorms okay the first thing you do is stay in your car don't get out of it <laughs> the second well, thing you die. do is stop driving because when you are driving and it's hailing on the highway your car is like on a bunch of marbles Okay. So you stay in the car. You try to find a place, stop driving. And then you park your car wherever you can at an angle. Don't park it like this. Park it at an angle. Because most of the time when there's hail, there is wind that is rotating, not necessarily a tornado, but a severe thunderstorm with the winds changing. That way, all of the hail won't hit all of the windows in your car. Now, another okay. thing to do is if you are by yourself, make sure to put your head down and cover your head in case something breaks. If you have, I know you have grandkids. If you had the grandkids, get them closer in the center as you can. Nobody looks at any windows mm -hmm. in case the windows break. Right. Nobody look at any windows and make sure they put their head down and cover it with whatever they can until I keep a blanket in the car at all times. Well, that's a good thing. You could just cover them up with the blanket. Yeah, both of our both of ours are like hatchback. We don't have like trunks. So that just would make be good. sure you, you don't look at any windows. Front no, that's, back a, front. that's a hard task. But yeah, I mean, I get it because if you do and it burst. Yeah, I'll, I'll just have to put my little self underneath that blanket. Well, you know what? Since the year 2000, you don't hear this a lot. It's hard to imagine that just hail uh -huh. can kill you. But since the year 2000, four, four people have died from hail hitting them. Oh, my goodness. That's awful. That's awful. So... so I just wanted to throw that out there at everybody. They need to remember that. Yeah, they do. Well, uh, the last thing that I wanted to, that I had to be able to share with you and with our audiences are uh, to that think like a farmer thing. And these are my little babies, the little seedlings that are coming along. And um, I'm excited about this. It's a new adventure. I've only, last year was our first year for our garden. And um, so I, I don't know much at all, but I'm giving it a good try. And all these things were packages of seeds that you can get for for a dollar at Dollar Tree. <laughs> the soil's a little bit more. My kind of store. There you go. <laughs> but it's, I'm hoping to be able to get all these things in the ground. And what doesn't go in our garden, I can share with the neighbors, two neighbors are having a garden. Uh, some of the kids are having a garden. So um, I'm feeling really good about that. Well, I think you're doing an excellent job and I cannot wait to see if you get a root to come off of that tree. That you Me were, too. <laughs> that, that was very interesting. That It's like drafting to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And, and it's like, if you get it, plant it, Dale, it, because you'll have good peaches off of it. Yes, figs. Yeah, I will. I'll have good figs. It'll be oh, great. it's figs. I thought it was a peach tree. It's a fig bush. It's a fig tree. Yeah. But see, that fig is already, um, it's a bearing tree, which means if you get a piece of a bearing tree or bush, it should bear. Then it's yeah. going to bear. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope I did it right. We'll see. Well, I can't wait layering. for that. I can't wait for that video to see what happens with it. That was that's that's one of my favorites. I like them all, Thank but that you. one got my attention good. I went, "You do that, girl. <laughs> you go." I'm trying, I'm trying not to peek at it, but um, we'll see. So, uh, but Jewel, I appreciate everything so much. And you know, you had called me when we were talking about hurricane preparedness and when I shared my dragonfly story as far as that um, in order to be able to receive blessings, we do have to, to do something. We have to give a little something. So we have to look after ourselves and get out there and do some things. But you shared a story with me about one of your friends potentially visiting you. Yes, all, all of my subscribers know who Dawn Dunlap was. I called her Itty Bitty. She had a bitter bone disease from birth. She wasn't even hardly three foot tall in a wheelchair all of her life. She never stood up all of her life. She had just turned 50, which is a long time for someone with what she had to still be with us. And she was happy and this and that. And I'm going to share something right quick, if I can here. Let's see if I can share screen. I want to show this, and I want to share it. Can you see that moth, Dale? I cannot. Well. Oh, there I, it is. There it is. Okay. Well, this is what you call a lunar moth. It's a huge silkworm moth they are nocturnal you hardly ever see one in the daytime and you hardly ever see one period now you can but two days after dawn died dawn got ran over in her wheelchair okay mm -hmm. after dawn died this pine tree is right in front of the window at my desk, as you know, in my yard. There was no way I could not see this big fat moth. Yes. There it was. It was meant for me to see it in the broad open daytime. Now, if you notice right around the bottom, I know you'll think I'm correct. That looks like little shoes. It does. The regular ones don't look that way. Let me stop oh. you. Let me stop sharing something and share something else with you right quick that goes along with this story. Now, let's see if this will come up right quick. No, I'm showing too much That's stuff, I guess. Let me, let me stop it. Oh, there it was. Let me get it back because it's very important to me that I show this so you know what's going on too. Okay. Here we go. Can you see now? Not yet. I still I looked, have a it, I looked it up. Oh, there now, we go. There we go. I looked it up. It is called a lunar moth. It is a nocturnal thing. It usually is around at night. It doesn't live but maybe 10 or 12 days. Now, this is a regular one. You don't see any little shoes on this one, do you? Mm -mm. There's no little shoes. Yeah. And what I really wanted to point out to people, and I'm not trying to make anybody think that I'm trying to change how they think about things, but what does it mean when you see a lunar moth? What okay. is the spiritual meaning of lunar moths? Lunar moths oh. represent rebirth, renewal of body and spirit, regeneration, and may even symbolize the soul itself. Lunar moths, like many types of moths and butterflies, are quite beautiful in appearance and have docile personalities. And that's what itty bitty had. Spit fire and let's go. 
So I, I, I could not help but think when you were doing your story about the grasshopper. Yeah, the dragonfly. The dragonfly, that's right. I wanted to share my story with the lunar moth because, you know, before I even looked it up, Dawn always said, I'm going to come see you. And Dawn lived in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. And she couldn't get here. Okay. But she was bound right. and determined one day she was going to come see me. <laughs> and I think she did. Okay. There you go. And so, isn't that sweet though? It's so precious. And it represents something that she was free and flying and doing well. And it, keeps us in touch with our Lord to be able to show that he says, I got you. I got you. <laughs> See, she's doing great. And she just wanted to say hi. I just think that's so special. Well, and Dale, I've enjoyed this time together so much. Once again, all my subscribers subscribe to her. Thank you. Thank you. Same, same for mine. Mm -hmm. Please go and see J7409. Jewel Chesson on the Weather Channel because she does come out and keep she looks after us every day. Don't you have one almost every day a weather announcement, a weather forecast? Yes, I usually take Sundays off unless there is like severe weather, tropical storms, or hurricanes. Like today, I did one because for us here on the coast, Dale, we still might get some nasties tonight. Right. And then by tomorrow to be gone, thank you, Jesus, and everybody should have a pleasant Monday across the lower 48. That'd but be even before we started this video in South Carolina and down in Georgia, they were having severe thunderstorm warnings at that time, which contained hail and 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So that's why you need to get all this little stuff that we've showed you today. Get it ready now. So when you need it, you grab it, you have it right you're ready. Now I now I feel more comfortable because I know what well, I know I had grandma's matches from back when Dorothy <laughs> was born. And I well, you know, what are those water peels? Oh, they, they you know what? Hot. You know what, Dale? Speaking of matches, there's another thing. I have a lot of matches too, as you've seen them on my counter. But another thing that really works even better is one of these. It's an electronic lighter. Right. Now, what this does, you can see it's got an X in the middle. Uh-huh. Don't touch like it. like a little flame. Don't okay. touch it. It's windproof. Don't touch it, though. But you can plug these up and charge them off of these little chargers like we've been showing. Right. And they last a good long time. They're windproof. They light candles. They okay. light stoves. They awesome. light everything. So okay. this is something else that somebody might want to check out. Okay. Well, girl, it has been a pleasure. I'm yes, kidding. it has. Oh, Thank and you. one quick thing, Dale. If you don't have a barometer, everybody get one. Yeah. Uh, we you have don't have one, to get an ex dad's and it doesn't work. You so. do not have to get an expensive one. I have a weather station. You've seen yeah. it. You've seen it in my living room. But I also have this old one. I want to show it right quick before we get off of here. It is very, very old. I've marked on it with magic markers and everything else. But see, it's one of these old timey ones. Now, okay. okay, since we've been talking, the barometric pressure at my house has fallen. So that means, yeah, we do have a system coming in. Okay. okay. So get these, set these. If you have a hurricane, a tropical storm, anything like that, especially a hurricane. Oh, the sun's out. It's beautiful. Well, that's the eye. What right. you do in a situation like that, when the storm starts at your house, whether it's severe or not, just starts raining, mark and set your barometer. You will see it going down. When the sun comes out, it will still be going down. When it reaches okay. its lowest point, it will stay there for 15 minutes. Then when the storm starts to pass on away from you, it will start to rise. Then it's safe to go out. Okay. Okay. It's not safe to go out until it's reached its lowest point and it starts to rise again. Don't ever go okay. out until it does that. 
Okay. Well, that was a good lesson learned. I have and to go get you, the daddy's barometer out. And you can check the water in your commode too, but that's not a very good way to tell when to go out. <laughs> that just knows yeah. that it's coming. Okay. Right. okay. So, <laughs> Everybody needs one. If you don't have one, you don't have to spend a lot of money on one. You don't have to buy a big old weather station to get one. You can just buy a simple barometer and it does the very same thing. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Sounds like a good plan. I want your water bottle and a barometer. Those are two priorities that I'm going to get. So, well. <laughs> And like I say, if you can't afford all this stuff right now, go ahead, look it up, see what you want. Keep the page, get it soon as you can. There you go. That's and right. I was talking about like picking up batteries like every other month, a pack of these or a pack of them. Do the same thing with canned goods. Right. right. Like maybe get some soup or maybe get some corned beef hash. Or just get simple stuff you can heat up easily, but yet you can eat. Right. Right. Something and. You know, everybody likes something warm, but you can something that can fit in your little camping pots that right. would go over your canned stove that you have. So, yeah. So with good. all of that said and done, you want to say your goodbyes and then I'll say mine and we'll get out of here. <laughs> well, I really do appreciate everyone coming to Homestead in the Colony and with my friend Jewel Chesson at J7409 on the Weather Channel. Um, what we have learned today is invaluable. And these are things that you may not have thought about, but are at your ready to be able to start on the storm. So thank you, my friend. I appreciate everything that you do. And I hope to see you guys soon. Well, thank you, Ann. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed this a lot. It's like I've been over at Homestead in the Colony with you. And... <laughs> Yeah. I appreciate you so much. You'll never know. May my subscribers and your subscribers have a good day, a safe day, and a blessed day. And may all of you have much peace, love, and kindness in your life, not only today, but all the days ahead. We thank you for watching. We hope you've learned something. There's a lot of more stuff we could talk about. But we need to cut it off now. We'll do this again coming up in the future. I can't wait for Dale's stuff to get growing so we can do it again and see what she's got. Maybe there she'll bring go. me some, huh? <laughs> so, I love you guys. Thank you, Ann. Everybody love be you. safe. And we will talk to all of you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.